Hi, and you're very welcome to our second episode of the Science Lesson Support System. Suitable for primary school from ages six to secondary, right through to long life learners. Episode one was a very important introduction on how these simple little resources can help make learning and teaching science easier for both the teacher and the student. We highly recommend watching our first episode as it contains vital material on how the system works for a more intuitive learning approach to STEM. I'll link it down below. Today we'll cover the topic reactions on climate change and look at how the support system adds connectivity to all areas of science and nature, allowing for a better integration of topics and differentiation for students. So the simple lesson plan we'll be covering today is on chemical reaction called combustion, such as fire, or a gas hob, or most heating systems, and your internal combustion engine. Anything that burns really, and if it burns, it turns. As explained in episode one, atoms have little hands called electrons. Atoms are so friendly and love to make friends. And when they do, they form molecules. And nature always reuses its atoms. Now, you can ignore why some of your elements have different amount of holes, as you won't need to know this for primary, but we'll cover it later briefly in episode 12. Molecules make up all solids, liquids and gases, as explained visually using this easy to assemble resource, which we'll be building in episode three. Atoms make up all living things, and when those living things die, they can become fossils over a long time, and their atoms get repurposed. Atoms are nature's Lego, and science is all about telling a story, the true story of nature. So let's tell that story of nature, and let's meet some of the characters of our story. We have the white balls that are the element hydrogen. The red balls are the element oxygen. The black ones are the element carbon. And then we can add this to our forever legend to share throughout our school. All you need is a hot glue gun, and any piece of solid flat board or object to write on and glue them to. And just like we all have different surnames, we are all human. Well, each colour is a different family of element, but all balls are atoms. So let's do a fun class exercise on the reaction of combustion. For each student, all you need is a small Ziploc bag, a paper plate, nine atoms, and six connectors which represent electrons. And those nine atoms consist of our four element of hydrogen, our four element of oxygen, and one element of carbon. And you can keep these all neatly stored in a handy bag for shared use throughout your school. Let's pause the video and have a quick read of the four basics we covered in episode one. Okay, First off, it's super important to count our ingredients first. We do this for two reasons. The first reason is to ensure that some atoms didn't get lost or mixed up in the bag from the last time they were used. And for that reason, it's always good to have a little bag of spares. And the second reason will be revealed throughout this episode. So let's get counting our atoms. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine atoms in total and one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Great, let's make a molecule and have some fun. Remember, this is a true story and nature always reuses its atoms to make molecules. Atoms are so friendly, all they want to do is make friends. Hey, wanna be friends? Yeah, sure, you look like someone I could be bonded to. So we simply take four hydrogens, connect them to the carbon and voila, what have we got? Well, let's revert to our display that we will be making in episode four and discover what we've made. Looks like we have made a methane molecule with the chemical name CH4. Would you like to take a guess why it's called CH4? That's right. Intuitively, we have one C for carbon and four H's for hydrogen. It's that easy. Fossil fuels are the leftovers of long dead decomposed prehistoric life. Methane is also known as a natural gas, but also fondly known as farts. We have some spare atoms here in front of us, 
And what does nature do with its atoms? It always reuses them to make molecules because atoms are so friendly. So let's use them atoms up. And we end up with two sets of these. Now let's revert back to our display and discover what we made. It looks like we've made two molecules of O2. Awesome, we have fresh air and a relief from that fart molecule earlier on. We now have a recipe for combustion. The fire triangle says we need one more thing, a spark. But before we ignite our fuel, let's count our atoms again pre-combustion. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine atoms in total, and one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Okay, nothing's much changed there. So we have our fuel, we have our O2 air oxygen supply. So let's make the spark in three, two, one, and explode those atoms, ideally not to go beyond the plate, of course. Okay, we're halfway through our explosion, so pause time and count our atoms again. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine atoms still mid-explosion, and one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. What a coincidence. Now, as said earlier, what does nature always do with its atoms? Nature always reuses its atoms to make more molecules. But this time, the consequences of combustion or fire makes a brand new combination of molecules. So on pause time, and let's get to it. And this time, we end up with two sets of these. And reverting to our display, we can see we've made two H2O molecules, which is water vapour in this case, because it's a hot reaction at the moment. And what's left? Well, let's get them together, and you get this one C and two O's. Let's revert to our display and discover what we made. It looks like we've got CO2, carbon dioxide. And this is what humans exhale after we breathe, and what you get when you burn something. And lastly, let's count our atoms post fiery combustion. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine atoms still, and one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, the same amount as we started with. This is called the law of conservation of mass. Nature always reuses its atoms. And atoms always want to make molecules. It's actually that easy. And this fundamentally applies to all types of reactions. It's nature swapping either atoms or whole molecules around. A human hair is about one million atoms thick. So this is a very small experiment compared to the real thing. We can now ensure that the student puts the right amount of atoms back into their bag for use for the next class. So we covered atoms and molecules, which can be applied to all of the stuff we can see, smell, touch or feel. Teaching about climate change is also a fantastic opportunity to discover all about light as well, which is one of the things we can't directly see, smell, touch or feel, but we can feel its warmth through the molecules in our own skin and nerves. So let's explore the relationship between light and CO2 and climate change. CO2 is a gas that has an interesting property, because CO2 is a heat trapping gas. I'll leave a link below to a great short demonstration on this. I can show you how carbon dioxide affects Earth's climate using this heat sensitive or infrared camera which is purring away here. And a candle, this glass tube which is hooked up to this rather large canister of carbon dioxide gas. Now if I light the candle you'll see that on the monitor the camera picks up the flame perfectly. Look at that, the hottest parts are glowing white. Now watch what happens when I turn on the carbon dioxide. Just keep your eye on the flame. The gas is invisible, so you don't see it fill in the tube. But as it comes in, you should see the candle start to disappear. There it goes. Look at that. What's happening is that the carbon dioxide in the tube is effectively trapping the heat. 
The candle's warmth no longer reaches the camera. Instead, it's absorbed by the carbon dioxide inside the tube. That's exactly how carbon dioxide works in the atmosphere. It traps heat, preventing it from escaping into space. Light waves that are visible to us is actually just a small part of a wider electromagnetic spectrum of waves, which make up lots of other hidden forms of these waves that our eyes can't see in. But it's only one of these special types of waves that we are interested today to help explain climate change. And that is the infrared wavelength, also known as heat. Infrared radiation loves to get molecules hyper and makes them jiggle and spin about. We will unmask this hidden world of light by using our thermal image camera for you today. The atoms in my hand are jiggling really, really fast right now. But I'll hold my hot hand up against this cold wall. The heat of my hand are exciting the atoms and molecules of the wall, making them jiggle faster and faster, all while the molecules in my hand now are getting slower and slower, all because my hand is losing heat energy. And when I release, we see the light of this energy because the molecules in the wall say, I'm too hot, I'm too hot, and want to give their extra energy away if there is a colder place to send it to. This results in the emission of a hot surface. It radiates heat. If I was to make a pun or a joke here, I'd call it secondhand light. So what's this got to do with climate change? Well, our sun sends light down through the atmosphere every day. A lot of this light is able to pass through our atmosphere without any problem. But as soon as the light hits molecules of the roads and buildings, it excites them. And that light changes. And as you all know of a hot day, the sun heats the tarmac or buildings and surfaces, which all emit a new second-hand type of light. And we call this, as we've learned, infrared radiation. But here's where climate change comes in. Because the light has now changed into a different wavelength of heat, this specific wavelength of heat interacts with the CO2 molecule's special properties, and it can't get past it. The infrared wavelength gets trapped between the sky and the hot ground. The more CO2 that's in our atmosphere, the more heat gets trapped, like an insulating blanket. This is called the greenhouse effect, and aptly named. Though we're only doing a science lesson, it can be quite depressing, but it's important to know that humans still have lots of time to change our behaviours. Lots of hope, but lots to do. And education is the key. And educators all help make a massive contribution to the fight against climate change. So well done. In fact, this lesson helps arm against misinformation of this topic. The law of conservation of mass is vital to know about, for instance. If it burns, it turns. So every single atom of one ton of liquid has to go somewhere. So let's do a quick recap. Using our bag of nine atoms and six electrons and our paper plate, you can make methane gas and oxygen simulate combustion, resulting in H2O and CO2. And that light comes into our atmosphere, hits objects, and that infrared part of the spectrum of light can get trapped between the ground and the atmosphere. And that's basically climate change in a nutshell. These resources and displays are a memory in themselves and will help guide you as the teacher to add connectivity through all of your existing science lesson plans. No hours of research needed. Just copy our models, simply look, read and observe the shapes, and that's all you need to know to help you or the student with a reconsolidation of memory rather than having to simply memorise facts alone. The overlapping benefits of these molecules is powerful. Just in this episode to explain climate change, we covered heat, chemistry, geology, air composition, the light spectrum, laws, solids, liquids, gases, and much, much more. And over the next 10 episodes, you will see even more, and a true power in overlapping topic connectivity and integration of the science lesson support system. Because atoms are nature's Lego. So that's it for this episode. 
Next time we'll be taking a look at solids, liquids and gases and how to build a great display for intuitive learning. So don't miss it. So thank you for watching. I've been your host, Paul Burton. And remember, you're not just teaching STEM, you're telling a story, the true story of nature.